uh, I see two major changes. One is how um, like educational institutions engage with students and faculty and staff. I think, and that engagement has two two ways. I mean, one is uh, I think students. So how the learning is organized and uh, how the, how we rethink learning. So um, I think this what we face here will be the effects will be here for the long term. So the impact on industries like education will be there. So even though we will be kind of coming back to a normal, that normal will not be what we where we started. So that well, that won't be the normal of last year. So it will be somewhere in between. And then that somewhere in between, I think. Um, uh, there is an opportunity for uh, education much easier than hotels and uh, you know holiday clubs and everything or travel uh, companies there the education can we now we know through last 10 years that uh, the knowledge and skills can be developed and transferred by the help of technology we have excellent examples and it's been growing so that's not something new that we have to invent so um, so that uh, the skills development, knowledge development will be using much more uh, of the technology. So that's uh, that's one uh, one change. We can go deeper into that, but uh, there will be, of course, needs to develop and use new tools, new um, methods, new approaches. We need to change our habits and skills because we have lecture halls large campuses, textbooks, all these things will need to transform. So textbooks will transform into interactive uh, sessions, uh, you know, like um, on the digital campus. Um, and the, and the lectures, also the lectures will transform into more like workshop style learning sessions. So they will divert into things. If you just tell something that can be kept on the digital campus, but if you want to practice something, you can do it still online with Teams and Zoom and everything. The say, and then there will be new tools about that. Um, and also there are opportunities, for example, in the old system, when you missed a class, you, you just missed it. You, you have to run after summary notes, somebody's notes and everything. But you can record online sessions as we are doing right now. So the, so the student, I think, Captive, a caption, the student engagement will be much better if we do things right. Uh, there are disadvantages, for example, um, uh, the bandwidth is, all, is still the, an, a disadvantage in lots of countries. So in West it is better, but lots of countries, imagine you're attending a class from India, from Africa, um, to a pro program in, in UK or Germany, I think the bandwidth of the connection uh, is will be different. That's that's going to be a challenge. I think creating interaction will be a, a, a challenge. Student learning experience will be a challenge, but they all can be managed and learned. So fast adapters will do it quicker, and uh, early adapters. And there will be you know the more conservative ones. They will of course lose students. They will lose uh, good results and everything. So that's learning. And then also the way we manage, so the remote work will still be there. So that will give a lot of opportunity to use faculty and talent for educational institutions around the world, rather than bringing them to wherever they are based. So the boundaries and borders will disappear. So the way we, and also the processes, lots of processes can be digitally done and digital transformation will be a huge issue. And the big answer is, uh, I have been always uh, almost uh, protesting against that. The educational institutions in the old world, I would always call them as real estate companies, not educational companies. The whole, the, the, all of the asset base, everything, even the accreditation is based on real asset, real estate. The, the accreditor would come to you, how many students do you have? Well, I have 2,000. Well, this is, I have to have, nobody takes care about the learning outcomes or anything. So that will change. That's a big change. And I wonder what's going to happen with all these real estate. I mean, in US, there are universities with water parks, you know, 
like huge real estate investments are made. So that will be a major change. So that's, um, I think, from the university's engagement side. And the last thing is, uh, we I, and I will talk more about it in the later uh, stage, but the immigration and student mobility, international student mobility, that will change. We already had signs of it before Corona, where there were like in UK, US, um, the public, the government had some anti-immigration uh, policies, uh, you know, bringing production home and local focus and everything. So these um, winds of change a against mobility will be increased, I think, and uh, you know, we'll have more reasons to close doors um, to chi you know, the students from Asia, like China, for example, where it all started, whatever. So that is um, that's going to be a big impact and some regions and countries will be smart enough and they will attract that talent and some countries will lose that talent and of course the industry the education will suffer so i think that's um, what i'm seeing and the big question for me where will all the chinese students go i think they are they are um, an acceleration and emergence of the changes that has been taking place. Thanks God that we had uh, prior experience and best practices like on, on these like student engagement or work engagement with the help of existing technologies. But now there were like resistors, like conservative parts of uh, either companies or organizations. Now they are also adapting. So that's accelerating. I think this is a fantastic way to put it. But also the changes in the mobility will accelerate, which is a negative uh, impact. So uh, I think closing doors against uh, student mobility will be more and more restrict. Um, so they will, they have been there. We, we've seen it last couple of years with Brexit, changes in US, movements, uh, certain political movements in Europe, particularly in certain countries. Um, so they will also accelerate uh, on the negative side. I think uh, we need to go back what universities are made for. I mean, I think I, I go back to uh, the university name. I think universities are made for to, to develop the universal person. So I think we need to go back to that because what we need at the moment is and what we are missing in great deal with this uh, pandemic is a, a, a planetary collaboration and we need a planetary citizenship. I think universities should be places to uh, emancipatory places to bring out that possibility, that potential where somebody out of, you know, when they come out of the university, they are uh, not putting walls between people and genders and, and social habits and everything, but they are bringing together and they care for the planet with all the human and non-human beings on that planet. Forget distinctions within the human, but I'm just extending and expanding that to, to all the non-human li living. So my dream for universities is in the, you know, the idealistic side is that in the, on the practical side is, I think there's another role of the university to prepare people for the society and have them access to society. And that which happens, the primary currency of that is, is about jobs. And we will need a lot of jobs and we will need a lot of skills, especially after that crisis and a lot of also entrepreneurial, uh, I think, drive. I think universities should play this role. So we should go, you know, that's how we build university. And I, in, I would invite all the universities to that. We should go beyond pro papers, uh, with paper credentials, like we call diplomas, and then really work hard religiously to create uh, and enable jobs for people. So, so that's the realistic side. So because of these jobs, they can join communities, they can get married, they can become a member of the society, then they can move to planetary citizenship. Oh.
on top of the last two things I have said, uh, I think the planetary membership or citizenship and uh, a, a, a enabling access to society, I think universities should um, also prepare, should create people with the uh, with the right skills and with the um, uh, for for the future. So they should bring future proof skills like self learning, adaptability, um, tech, you know the technology saving us. So technology will be in our lives in every industry, and um, and they should uh, be the places where we can see the best of every people coming out rather than trying to squeeze them into boxes and roles if they are I, I, I love that emancipator they expand and they become best of their what is possible for them and if if universities can transform from lots of universities with apologies but from an oppressive educational uh, space to an emancipatory space because we need people with freedom of thought and freedom of judgment and and with um, active participation with these freedoms to the society uh, and they will come out of the university and I think with the with, when we get rid of lots of cost the education can be much affordable and accessible so we can include people with difficulties and impairments uh, much better. We can uh, include people with, uh, you know, limited economic conditions uh, or less privileges into quality education. So I think with that change will enable us to make education affordable, accessible, and it will clear out the borders, uh, this uh, uh, superficial, artificial borders that we have created in our minds and everywhere. So I think education can be a joining force for the future of the planet.